the cancer industry uh, tend to assume, and they do, that cancer is a genetic disease and it's only going to progressively get worse. And in that, under the circumstances, what they're, what they're trying to do is to invent a chemical to block that cancer growth, to kill the cells. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying. That's chemotherapy right. or radiation therapy. They're trying to develop things to kill those cancer cells because they don't see the opportunity of reversing the cancer. That's what we showed 30 years ago, 35 years ago. We could reverse the cancer and do it really quickly by simply just changing the nutrition. In this case, change the level of protein or the kind of protein. A lot of them know it, I'm convinced. None of them, though, will mention it. In fact, what they're doing, they're turning the guns on me and they're trying to block what I do. Uh, and, and that's another whole story unto itself. The, uh, the breast cancer campaign, for example. Yeah. Uh, the last, uh, I, just by accident, I was at one of their events in Indianapolis a couple of years ago, and there was a big crowd, 30,000 people or something of that sort, and they were having a race as part of the event. Mm -hmm. And they were actually giving people chocolate milk along the way. Yes. Oh, yes. Dotsie, it's Dotsie. like Switch for Good is, was born. Yes, yeah. exactly. Switch for yeah. Good was born yeah. because Dotsie was, saw such... She was so bothered by the fact that the the big milk was sponsoring the Olympics and using athletes to to basically sell that product as mm -hmm. if you the only way you could get strong and healthy was by was by um, drinking milk, right, Dotsie? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I have a, a personal story. My mom, um, she has lung cancer, um, and after she was diagnosed, she's doing very well now. But after she was diagnosed, she started eating. Um, Greek yogurt for protein and she had milk in her coffee and for my birthday that year I asked her to watch you in Forks Over Knives because of the very powerful information you have about how milk and especially the casein in milk turns on cancer and um, uh, turns on cancer cells and she she actually she watched it and she actually did cut out all dairy mm -hmm. except for she still has a little bit of butter two pats of butter in the morning on her <laughs> toast <laughs> she's been she's, she's made progress she has not had a recurrence of her cancer since then and she also eats a lot of cruciferous vegetables and i you know i believe that her change in diet really helped that um so yeah. that's my personal thank you to for what i believe is saving my mother's life and extending it um through your your advice so thank you well, thank you. Uh, you, you, you that, that touches on another question, by the way, uh, that you just asked a moment ago, and that is, how come people don't know this? That's a really major question. And, and in fact, the book I'm just now finishing is addressed to that question. And, and, and this, is, this, I, this idea that nutrition can have that kind of effect, mm -hmm. not just on heart disease, but also on, I mean, not just on cancer, but also heart disease, diabetes, and all the rest, that kind of idea has resulted from a serious misunderstanding on the part of the entire world of the society, a misunderstanding of what nutrition really is. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's and a good point. Question also asked, why, don't, why don't they do some research on this? Well, <laughs> the people who are doing the research were never trained in nutrition, for starters. Yes, we know that doctors have, what, five hours on average of nutrition in their, all their years yeah, of that's not even training. enough. That's, that, that, that's a little bit of mm -hmm. just enough information to be dangerous. Right, right. And lead any place. Yeah. And so, so they don't do that research. And uh, I have been in the cancer community for a long time myself. I know the, the, what goes on, the, the, the mindset that people have. Uh, and no one really wants to entertain the idea that nutrition can have any effect that's off the table, off the chart, because they've, they've come to believe over decades that cancer is a genetic disease. Mm -hmm. And if it's a genetic disease, and because genes, once converted to cause cancer, they don't revert back. They don't back mutate, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's the assumption. And if it's a genetic disease, then cancer, therefore, is a dangerous, progressive, aggressive disease. It's going to keep on going forward all the time. And the only way that maybe it can be treated is to kill those cells. Mm -hmm. That's the basis for the entire chemotherapy industry. Hundreds of millions and billions of dollars. So and you're saying what, you can I'm actually talking, turn off those cells. Yeah, just turn them off. Mm -hmm. just, just turn them off by nutritional yeah. means. Yeah. And that's something they don't want to hear. They don't want the public to know that either. 
Do you think um, some of it is what, because they sure. feel like people won't be compliant? Um, like patients won't be compliant, so if we give them this idea, then yeah. they're not going to really do it, and they're not going to get well. Or do you think it's just all drug money? <laughs> no, that, that's an excuse. That's okay, a, just sort of an excuse, a convenient excuse, and and it's sort of true. As long as you keep saying something and want to believe it, and they want the public to believe it, then the public too also say, "I I can't do that." Well, on the other hand, my friend Dr. Esselton, mm -hmm. who works with heart disease, for example. Mm -hmm. Uh, he had a study, he had something like 198 successive patients that he recently published on, where it, actually in that case, nutrition could turn the, can't, turn the heart disease back, right? Reverse. So he, set up, he set them down. It's a really neat little observation. All those 198 patients were brought to his place, spent with their spouses, by the way. They were brought there and listened to about five hours of instruction from Dr. Esther and his wife. Uh, how to do things. And in a lot of cases like that, it might end up like you just said, oh, they're not going to do that. Well, they all had heart disease. They're motivated. And so you got to give them that fact. Mm -hmm. So in any case, they went home. Okay, they're going to eat this way. What's going to happen next? Uh, he called them, called them back then, somewhere between two and seven years later. And he just said, ask them, how many of you, you folks are, are still doing that? 89% said yes, they were still doing it. Wow. That's a pretty high rate. Mm -hmm. They stayed with it because they learned fairly well the information and they had a problem. There were, though, however, of the 198, 17 or 19, I guess it was, uh, who did not do it. And so he asked the people who, who stayed with it, how many of you have had an additional heart problem? Only one did. <clears throat> he passed away. Uh, but his wife, late, and that was someone I knew that I'd sent the, to my friend S. Uh, he, in fact, his wife told me later that he, he was, her husband was not sticking with it. Mm. So here's all these people. They, they went forward. They didn't get any more heart problem. The 19, in, in, in contrast, who decided not to do it, 62% of those people had an additional heart attack. And I think four died. Wow. That's very yeah, that's so that's telling. your question concerning. You know, like, they like to say, oh, I don't want to hear that. You know, but, you know, people don't, they, they, when they're not convinced of the information, they're more likely to choose the course that they find, you know, what they've been doing. Yeah, and it seems like it's a bit more powerful when they're actually facing the disease or the situation. Right hey, now. folks. Okay. Back by very popular demand is our plant-powered plate fridge magnet, which you are going to receive for free if you leave us a rating and a review on whatever platform you're listening to this podcast on. So here are the details. Just write your quick review. Does not need to be long. Does not need to be a whole story. Just be honest and speak from the heart. Then take a quick screenshot of the review you wrote and email it to us at podcast at switchforgood.org. That's podcast at switchforgood.org and include your mailing address so we can send you a power plate. We are doing this because the more reviews we garner, the higher we go in search results, which means more folks will learn about our podcast. So the power is in your hands. Leave us a review and zoom, zoom, your power plate arrives at your doorstep. So thank you so much for tuning in today. If we helped you in any way, then click the subscribe button and let's keep hanging out together. We have so much more to share with you. And if you need more information on actually making the switch for good, please visit us at switchforgood.org for loads of info. And you can subscribe to our mailing list where you will receive all sorts of super cool gifts, discount codes to our very fave dairy-free products, and a lifetime of powerful health tips. So join us on the journey to switch for good. This is the future. <laughs>